Hi everyone, my name is Miss Connolly. I'm making these videos for my fifth grade students and decided to make them public so everyone could learn right now. If you have anything you want me to cover, ConnollyMathAtHome at gmail.com. Um, and let's get started on today's topic. So we, in my last video, I talked about writing standard form after you were given expanded form with exponents. So expanded form is when we stretch out a number by place value, which we're gonna go over in this video again. Um, and then you write it in standard form, which is the way that we usually see numbers written. Um, so that's what standard form means. So in the last video, we dealt with whole numbers. So we are going to expand our understanding of writing numbers in standard form to decimals. So let's just review what we have going on with place value here. So to the left of the decimal is talking about whole numbers. So we have the ones place, tens, and hundreds. Then comes thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Then it would be millions, ten millions, hundred millions. Then it would be billions, ten billions, hundred billions. And it would keep on repeating the same pattern. Um, to the right of the decimal represents numbers that are less than one whole. Um, and we'll think about those numbers here. So um, the first place value to the right of the decimal is tenths with the THS, um, hundredths, and thousandths. So these um, here in purple represent numbers that are less than one whole. In fifth grade in Massachusetts, we are not going to be writing decimals as exponents. We are gonna be writing them as fractions. In the sixth grade or in other parts of the country, not, not quite positive, you might see this written as 10 to the negative first, and that would be 1 10th. 10 to the negative second would be 1 100th, and 10 to the negative third would be 1 1,000th but let's go back to what we're learning in fifth grade here in Massachusetts. So when we are thinking about one divided by 10, we all know what that means, one divided by 10. We talked about the fraction bar a bunch of times. So one divided by 10, really hard for me to write on the computer, everyone, so please bear with me. Um, so one divided by 10, let's talk about the number one. The digit is going to shift to the right because it's getting 10 times smaller. So when we have the digit one in the ones place, it will get 10 times smaller and go one place value to the right. Um, one tenth is one divided by 10, so it got 10 times smaller. If we divide by 10 again, um, it's gonna get move one more place value to the right because it's getting 10 times smaller again. So when we think about one one hundredth, um, it's shifting one place value over. One got 100 times smaller, so 10 times smaller, 100 times smaller. It goes to the hundredths place. And when we do one divided by 1,000, I'm sure you can predict that it's going to shift three place values over because it's getting 1,000 times smaller. So let's watch 10 times smaller, 100 times smaller, 1,000 times smaller. You see that it shifted from here, one place value, 10 times smaller, 100 times smaller, 1,000 times smaller. So that's what's going on here. If you wanted a little bit of understanding about place value, but what, so what I wanna teach you today is that when you are given a number in um, expand, or, yes, when you're given a number in expanded form, you're gonna be seeing the decimals written as fractions. Um, and you need to interpret what place value they're talking about, how many groups of one tenth you have, and we're gonna write those numbers in standard form. So let's get started um, with an example. So if you watched the last video, let me make this all the same size, sorry about that. If you watched the last video, um, we talked about exponents and what those mean. I'm not gonna go over it in depth right now um, because we're talking about the decimals, okay? So when we think about two times 10 to the first. We're thinking about two times the number 10, all right? Then when we're thinking about three times one, we are thinking about three groups of one, so we're not gonna change anything there. Then we get to when we see um, our decimals written as fractions. So when we think about four groups of one tenth, that is the same as repeated addition, one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth, which is four tenths. So I'm going to write this as four groups of one tenth so that we can make the transition to decimals. When we get to the next one, we're thinking about three groups of one hundredth. 
When we get to the last one, we are thinking about two groups of 1,000. Okay, so let's figure out what each of these numbers is when we do the actual multiplication, and then we'll start filling them in with place values. So we have 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 4 groups of 1 tenth, which is 4 tenths, plus 3 groups of 100, which is three hundredths plus two groups of one thousandth, which is one thousandth plus one thousandth, the same as two thousandths. So let's think about, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can fill in the digits in our place value chart. We can think about um, adding um, using the standard algorithm, or we can think about just writing the digits in each place value. There's a lot of ways to figure this out. So let's think about what we have here, two groups of 10, which is 20, um, and three groups of one, which is three. You can probably figure out right now that our whole numbers are 23. So I'm gonna write the digit two in the tens place, and the digit three in the ones place, and that represents that I have two groups of tens, and I have three groups of ones. So 20 plus three, 23. Now let's move to the tenths place. If we have four groups of one tenth, the digit in the tenths place is gonna be a four. Then if we have three groups of 100, the digit in the hundredths place is going to be a three. And if we have a two in the thousandths place, the digit here in the thousandths place is gonna be two. So two groups of one thousandth is two thousandths. And then um, friends in my class especially I want you practicing reading the um, number after you've done this work. We say 23. Right here, we say and, so 23 and, then you read this whole thing, 432 thousandths. One more time, 23 and 432 thousandths. So we say the place value here at the end, 432, then say the place value thousandths. Okay, so that is our first example of um, writing a number in standard form when we're given the expanded form with decimals. We thought about what each digit represents. Um, they gave us the place value, so the four went in the tenths place, the three went in the hundredths place, and the two went in the thousandths place. You can also think about it as 20, three, I'm just doing the standard algorithm, if you want to think about it this way, you don't have to, but I just want you to see what's going on. I'm going to run out of space. So you can see how each digit came into their place value when we added them together. Okay, and these are decimals. So this is 20 and 0 thousandths. All right, so let's move on to another one. I just have to erase all of my drawings first. Um, and I want you thinking about what place values are given to us and if there's anything missing. So there's gonna be some little red marks around here, but I'll, let's just move on to the next one so that we can keep moving. All right, so when we are looking here, we want to determine what um, each set of parentheses represents. And I'm gonna do the multiplication out this one time just to save a little bit of time. So if we have eight times 10 to the first, that represents 80, plus nine times one represents nine, plus four times 100 represents 400, and then nine times 1,000 represents the digit nine, is in the thousands place, okay? So we have 80 plus nine plus four hundredths plus nine thousandths. And this is where the place value chart really comes in handy when we're thinking about what is given to us and what might not be given to us here. So when we think about 89, we have um, eight groups of 10 plus nine ones, which is 89. Then I want us to think about the tenths place. Did they give us any amount in expanded form in the tenths place? They did not. 
So what we do is we use the digit zero to show zero tenths, okay? Then we wanna make sure that since expanded form told us that four uh, was gonna represent the number in the hundredths place, we wanna make sure oops, that our four is in the hundredths place, okay? And then our nine, they gave us the thousands place, so we wanna make sure our nine is in the thousands place. Here is something that we don't wanna see happening because um, this is not making sense of place value. The whole point of this is making sense of place value, but you might see some students do this. And this decimal here says 80, or this number here says 89 and 49 hundredths. But that is not what was given to us um, in expanded form. We have to make sure that we make sense of the place value. What was actually given to us was 89 and 49 thousandths. So we say the whole number 89, you say the word and 49, then say the place value thousandths. Okay, so 89 and 49 thousandths is different, big difference from 89 and 49 hundredths. So we wanna make sure that if there is a place value that's not given to us in expanded form. We're gonna use the digit zero to hold that place value. Okay, we have one more that we're gonna go over. Um, one more time, here we go. So we have eight times one, which is eight. Then they tell us that we have two groups of one tenth, which represents two tenths. And then they tell us we have nine groups of one thousandth, which represents nine thousandths, okay? If this feels confusing to write this out like that, just focus on putting the correct digits in the correct place value in your place value um, chart up here, okay? So let's do that so that we can make sense of it. I know that eight goes in the ones place because they give us that right there. So I'm gonna go to the ones place and I say eight. Then let's look at the next part of our expanded form. They said two groups of one tenth which means there's gonna be a two in the tenths place. So we're gonna go to the tenths place and we're gonna write the digit two. Then we're gonna to go to the last piece of expanded form and it says nine groups of one thousandth. They tell us the place value there. So I check, am I gonna put the nine in the hundredths place or in the thousandths place? And I'm putting it in the thousandths place. So what goes in the hundredths place, everyone? You should be thinking about this. The digit zero is going to go in the hundredths place. And how do we read this? We're gonna read the whole number, then we're gonna read all of this side, then say the place value. Eight and 209 thousandths. Okay, so we didn't cover a ton of exponents. That's in the last video. The point was to make sense of what is given to you with these fractions, what place value is given to you, you know what the fractions represent. I will show you one last time. You know what the what place value the fractions represent. You wanna make sure you're writing the digit, use your place value charts, very helpful. Make sure you're writing the correct digit and the correct place value. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Make sure you watch the one with exponents because you're gonna be required to do both at the same time, okay? Bye.